I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. Again. How are you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 everyone. Uh, once again, you're watching Wrestle Rock Podcast. I am with my partner, uh, Benoit, a.k.a. Uh, Nostradamus. Ben, how are you doing, my friend, today? Yeah, very good. And you? Yes, really, really good. And you know what? No. We, yes, we have a, a special guest. and uh, Our second WWE Hall of Famer. Yes, he is, um, honestly, the greatest woman in the 90s. Yes, yes, yes. And... Uh, We're going to introduce uh, yourself, um, Mrs. Uh, Alondra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa. How are you today? Uh, Hi, everybody. This is Miss Daisy. Yeah, this she is, is Daisy. not alone today. Uh, this is no. very awesome. Yeah. No, I love you. <laughs> I love her. I'm going to put her down now. Okay, I love you, Daisy. Hey. Um, hey, great guys. Nice to meet it. you. You're nice up there you. in snowy Quebec, and I'm in yeah. sunny Florida, baby. <laughs> well, yes, you're You're very, very lucky because it's very cold here today. Hey, you have a nice uh, setup behind you. That, that's pretty cool. Not bad. There's a lot of crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, memory. I whenever I do interviews or do my podcast or when I'm twitching, because I also game, I have lots of different things. So those are all my fire suits from when I used to race monster trucks. I've got yeah. a lot of merch. I've got wrestling stuff. Oh, my God. You name it. It's just crazy, crazy behind me. But so when we say snow in Quebec, I know because originally I'm from Minnesota. So I'm like your neighbor, dude. I'm like, I mean, I'm very familiar with Canada. I love Canada. I used to go up there all the time. We love you, Wesley. <laughs> ah, so I heard you introduce me as like, uh, okay, one of the greatest or the greatest in the 90s. He yeah. corrected you. No, I'm the greatest of all time, yeah, bitches. Exactly all because, time. Yes, between uh, you and me, uh, Benoit, uh, this girl changed uh, the visions of uh, women professional wrestling. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, 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 that's pretty cool, uh, honestly. And we remember uh, a lot of things such as... Uh, Your match against uh, Bull Nakano and uh, SummerSlam 1994 was just amazing, honestly. And um, against Lena Nikai at WrestleMania 10. Yes, that was just yeah WrestleMania 10. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, one of the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Yeah, everyone, yeah. yeah, you know that that WrestleMania 10 is rated is rated um, like one of the top 10 WrestleManias of all. Oh yeah, WrestleMania 10 is yes. Yeah. So I was I was on that. <laughs> <laughs> And today, um, we have uh, Alondra Blaze for uh, another reason, because uh, um, really soon uh, she will uh, release a, uh, a biography, a a, biography a about, uh, about all his career. Uh, the book's called uh, The Women Who Would Be King, uh, the Alondra Blaze story. And if my memory is good, uh, this is the first or the, the, the second Uh, book you released yes it the title is called the woman who would be king yeah the medusa story oh, the medusa, yes. Yeah. The medusa. yes because i own the name medusa and I, it's trademarked it has been trademarked over 40 years nice. and this is my first book <laughs> excuse me my first book okay and it is so, i mean If you put 20 years of wrestling and I'm still going strong, right? I'm still very involved with WWE and NXT and whatnot. And I am also, you know, just retired from monster trucks after 20 years. So that's 40 years of entertainment. How do you get 40 years in a book? Wow. You don't. You don't. You don't. Because... So now I'm going to probably have to come out with a book <laughs> number two and a book number three yeah. and a book number four. But this book here is fantastic. It is a book about a woman's tragedies to triumphs. 
overcoming all these wonder, you know, wonderful adversities. And I don't know if they were wonderful, but um, but it's a great feel good story. I do not throw anybody under the bus because that's not necessary. Mm -hmm. I do tell a lot of tragic stories about my own experiences of what I had to go through. Okay. And I would say it is compelling. It is motivational. It is overcoming. It is, it'll have you happy, sad, crying, exert. I mean, it'll just, it's, yeah, pretty cool. So I will say that about my book. So it, I believe in spreading the love within my industries, right? So I chose a publisher out of Canada. Yeah, this is ECW So the publisher Press. is ECW Press, yeah. which they're fantastic to work with. And my co-writer and my researcher was Greg Oliver. So, and he was so great to work with. God bless him for listening to all of my stories for a year and a half and then us, you know, putting it together. Okay. Um, so it is available on ECW Press in Canada now. And it also just dropped on Amazon. So you can get your pre-sales right now. So all your pre-sales are on Amazon and ECW Press. Yeah, so um, go to ecwpress.com. Uh, just uh, downstairs, you have the um, the link. The the link. Uh, the the link. website. Yes, exactly. So um, you're you're talking about uh, you're the monster truck industry. So um, the the first question: Where um, are you always in the monster truck? But you say uh, that uh, that you retired. So uh, my questions uh, will be uh, different. So. Uh, why you you you, de you decide to be to involve in uh, the monster truck industry? Okay, that's a great question. Why did I choose monster trucks yeah. and racing? Because yeah. um, I knew pro wrestling after all these years, and it was getting to be close to the end of my run, my you know twenty years almost. Mm -hmm. That I saw a direction in women's wrestling I did not approve of. Like I didn't. I did not enjoy wrestling in evening gowns or bikinis or my bra or, I mean, all these, you know, just lascivious acts of just, mm -hmm. oh, God. I mean, it was nasty what these promoters put you through. And I was under contract, so I basically had to do what they said. So I knew my contract was coming to an end in 2001. So I, I you know, well, that's when it was supposed to come to an end. So I knew it was coming up and I let them know that I would not be renewing my contract. Then I got word that Vince McMahon was going to, you know, perhaps allegedly buy WCW. And I'm like, oh, hell no, I am not going to be under contract while he purchases this. I'm, I'm giving my letter of resignation. I'm done before he purchased it because I didn't want him to own my name, Medusa. So I got a call from a friend of mine that used to work in the wrestling business. His name is Mike Weber. Mike Weber used to work for WCW. So he quit the wrestling business and he went into the racing business. Okay. And he started working for a company called Monster Jam. Okay. Now Monster Jam is based out of Florida. So he called me up and he said, hey, Deuce, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm getting the hell out of wrestling, buddy. I said, I'm retiring. I hate the direction that it's going. I hate the way they treat women. I'm freaking out, right? So after 20 years of wrestling, I hit the pinnacle of my career a couple times, which is unheard of anyway. So I said, it's time to retire. So I was just going to enjoy life, right? Yeah. I was going to go and run my brick and mortar, cool cats and hot dogs, doggy, you know, grooming salon and bakery. And um, I was just going to do that. But I got a call from Michael and he said, you need to drive a monster truck. And I said, a monster truck? What the <laughs> hell is a monster truck? He goes, come on, Medusa. You ride motorcycles and four wheelers and you're a gearhead. So why don't you check out a monster truck? So they flew me out to Kill Devil Hills out in Carolina, and they had me test drive Gravedigger with Dennis Anderson. Dennis Anderson is the legendary 
owner and driver of Bigfoot. So, I mean, not Bigfoot, I'm sorry. Oh, shit, that's a whole nother organization <laughs> of Gravedigger. So Dennis Anderson is the owner of Gravedigger. Um, and so I test drove with them and I was hired on the spot. I was hired instantly, just like that. And a couple weeks later, I was racing in a monster truck every weekend for the next 20 years. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, just before you, you were talking about uh, Vince McMahon and WWE. Uh, I have a question for you, uh, Mrs. Medusa. Uh, you left uh, WWE as a women's champion to join uh, the rival WCW. Everyone knows the segment where you threw away the WWE women's title. Do you still regret it uh, even after almost 30 years? I don't regret anything. You asked me if I still regret. I don't regret it. I mean, I said I, I in an interview, I did say once I regret it a little bit. And I, I regret it to the fact that it didn't get movement or the front part of journalism like it, it really should have, right? So I did not get the publicity, the correct publicity of why I trashed the title in the trash can. So I did not leave WWE. Okay. I received a letter in the mail from FedEx oh, on my okay. way out to a gig for WWE at the time. We didn't know that? Yes. Okay. I, I, I got a knock on the door as I'm getting ready to leave for the airport. And I opened it, thank God. And I said, it was, oh, it's from FedEx. Oh, it's from WWE. And I almost just tossed it thinking it was, you know, whatever. So I opened it up and it said, dear Miss Michelli, we will not, we will no longer be needing your services at WWE. And I'm like, what? Is this a rib? Is this a joke? No. Nope. I got fired. I got oh. fired and I never knew why. And so um, I, I slowly began to put, you know, put information together and whatnot and figured out what the reason was. And it wasn't what everyone thought, you know? So the reason why I got let go and none of the guys, I thought was pretty hypocritical. I mean, it was bad. Like, why would you get rid of this woman's league that you wanted to build and make, you know, something of and have, you know, and get credit you know, and building a woman's, you know, locker room, but it never happened. So I was very disappointed because they didn't build their woman's roster. We understand. Yes, I imagine. Uh, I remember one thing um, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, the story behind Mickey James who received uh, uh, his wrestling gear on a bag. That's pretty, uh, the same situation, the situation yeah. but... Uh, well, uh, let me talk about that. Story. There's nothing wrong with that. She, Mickey reacted, Mickey James reacted to getting her stuff from WrestleMania or WrestleMania, the, um, you know, the whole, what was it? The, uh, oh, I don't know, whatever they do. But anyway, so she received her stuff in a trash bag, right? Mm -hmm. And that's from WrestleMania week or weekend. Um, but, when I went to WrestleMania and they mailed me back all of my stuff that they used for display for WrestleMania weekend, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They mailed it back to me in a box and in a trash bag too. And that was in 2015. So, and all the other girls also said, well, I got mine in a trash bag too, but it was in a box. So I don't think it was deliberately towards her. Like maybe okay. she perhaps thought. Mm -hmm. I just, I remember seeing her put that out there and I'm thinking, I, I don't think that was deliberate. Why are we making a big thing out of it? But I feel that she felt that they could have done a better job than just taking the stuff, folding it, putting it in a trash bag, wrapping the trash bag up and then putting it in a box. To me, I feel that WrestleMania weekend is so busy that they mm -hmm. have so many helpers and mm -hmm. so many things to do that what they do is like, let's say I was a gopher like for WWE and I have Mickey James's number or, you know, or Alunda Blaze's number to get all of her stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So if I have Mickey James and Alundra Blaze's stuff, I know that I need to retrieve all of their stuff and put it in a bag, put it in a box, and FedEx it to them. Yeah, when I got my stuff <laughs> from WrestleMania weekend in a bag, I thought, well, that was nice because at least they put it in a plastic bag and if the box got wet, nothing got ruined. Right? Yeah, so yeah. that's I, I turned mine into a positive mm -hmm. and I didn't make a big deal of it. I didn't put it on social media. <laughs> to me, I thought that was kind of overreached a little bit. Like, like, how dare you? How dare you, WrestleMania? How dare you, WWE, put my stuff in a trash bag and send it to me? And I'm like, I thought it was a little bit overboard. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't think it was really a big deal. Overreaction for nothing. Yes, so yes, when, when yes. You say, the WrestleMania weekend is very busy, as you said. Oh yeah. Could you imagine life. trying to get everybody's? Can you imagine trying yeah. to get everybody's stuff mailed back to them in mm -hmm. a hurry? And, and so what? It, so what you do? You just carry a little box with trash bags, and you just put their stuff in it. Make sure it's all wrapped. Now you put it in the box. We're lucky we even got it back then. They could have maybe mailed it to somebody else. That's how I looked at it. I'm I was thankful it was in a plastic bag because I live in a rural area, like the middle of nowhere. So when I get my boxes dropped off at my house, they sit outside. Mm -hmm. So if it would have rained, all of my crap would have bag. So there's that. We're talking about uh, a plastic bag. Is now I remember uh, an <laughs> interesting <laughs> story about uh, Medusa in WCW. Uh, can you con can you confirm that that your move in WCW was tripped or not? Was tripped? What? Script? Stripped or scripted? Not? Script scripted. Oh, script. Okay, script. so what was scripted? Me yeah. go. What? Can you confirm the the move with the belt during uh, Nitro? Uh, 1995 was, was tripped or not? Oh yeah 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 yeah. So yeah, I mean that was all planned. Okay. I mean, according to Eric, he's gonna say he didn't know. According to me, yes, he did know. <laughs> <laughs> But Eric Bischoff was behind this idea. Ah, he loved the idea. Okay. And what is uh, your opinion about uh, the WCW acquisition by the WWE? What's okay? Say that again. What is your opinion about the WCW acquisition by the WWE? 2001 uh, during the invasion uh, storyline. The 2001 invasion. When, yeah. Yeah. When the WWE bout uh, his rival WCW. You remember that? Yes. yes. Yes, sir. So what was my feeling on that? Yeah, yes, your opinion. Your yeah. opinion. Well, I, I thought it was um it was inevitable. It was is it, it was a matter of time before that happened. I knew, you know, I just thought the way WCW was going and who they had running it, and it was all for the men, basically, because basically all the men were getting paid great contracts. I'm a, I mean, most of them. I was making crap money. You know, I was good to wrestling. Wrestling was never good to me. And so I worked my ass off to even make the little money that I did. But during that time, I feel that WCW was depleted because there was too many high contracts. All of these men were making millions of dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's going to go out of business sooner or later. And then Vince bought it. And I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm glad I'm gone. You know, <laughs> I got to keep my name. Uh, go ahead, my friend. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. How did you find? Uh, okay. Uh, how did you find out you were going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame at WrestleMania 31 weekend in 2015? Oh, it was great. So I was at a Monster Jam show. I was getting ready to race, and we were in a meeting. They're called driver's meetings. So we have to sit in the driver's meeting to go over all of the the 
the laws and, and the rules of driving the monster truck that weekend, right? And then I have to get with my crew chief to go over my gears and go over the, you know, look at the track to see what I'm going to do. So I'm sitting in a meeting and my phone started beeping. And I'm like, okay, I looked at my phone and it says, please call WWE. And I'm like, who the hell is this? <laughs> well, what a joke, whatever. And then it come back and go, please, can you contact us? We need to speak with you. And I'm like, oh my God, a fan got my phone number. Oh crap. Oh no, this is a joke. This is a rib. And then I got it again, another text during the meet, you know, the driver's meeting. And it said, this is Carano. Could you please call me? We would like to speak with you. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe this is. I'm thinking, well, okay, he can wait. They probably just want to get a hold of me because they need my address for tax reasons or something, right? I didn't even think anything, nothing. Because as far as I'm concerned, ever since I dropped the title in the trash, I knew that I was never going to be asked back to the WWE. <laughs> I just knew like, no, they're never going to call me to come back. I am totally on their, you know, do not, do not call her list or something, right? So I got, <laughs> so... I'm like, okay. So finally, he texts back again. He goes, hi, this is, you know, Carino. Please call us. I'm like, okay, fine. So the driver's meeting's over. And I get in my dressing room and I start undressing and I'm getting my fire suit on. In fact, one of these fire suits back here. And um, I'm getting my fire suit on. And I call him and I'm like, yeah, hey, this is uh, Medusa. And he's like, hello, Alundra. And I'm like, oh, serious. And he's like, yeah, we, you know, how you doing? Everything's good. And I said, I'm just in the middle of a driver's meeting. We're getting ready here. He goes, well, I've just got a question for you. Would you, it would be our honor and it would be amazing if you could uh, think about if you would like to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And I said, what? Get me? <laughs> You're, you want to put me in the Hall of Fame? And they're like, yes, they are so excited. They think that you'd be a great you know, da, 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 da. and I'm like, so my first question to Carino was, or Carano, excuse me, I keep calling him Carino, Carano. My first question to him was, does Vince McMahon know you're calling me <laughs> and asking? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's all for it. Him and Paul are like all for this. And I'm like, oh my it's gosh. Right. <laughs> so I was like, this is crazy. Okay. I guess people do change. So I hung up the phone and I was screaming like, oh my God. And the first person I called was my husband, of course. So yeah, I was surprised, excited, and totally taken back by it. Yeah. But you totally deserve uh, deserve it, honestly. Uh, oh, thank you. For, for some reason. But honestly, you're awesome. You were a great, a great wrestler, a great valet, a great. Uh, yes, Thank yes. you, so, guys. I really a great athlete. <laughs> a great athlete. Yeah. yeah so I will tell you this: I, I truly, truly enjoy pro wrestling. And there was a time in my life where I was very jaded, like I just couldn't stand wrestling because it just was not good to me. I was, I gave it my life but it did not give me anything back except heartache, really. And there was a few good moments, but I'm going to tell you my, my few good moments was winning the AWA title, winning the WWF title, and um, maybe the WCW Cruiserweight title. I don't know why they even gave me that. But the, the most, the best the best part of the whole wrestling was going into the WWE Hall of Fame because I've never had that experience of, of being doted on, like being treated really well. When I went back to the Hall of Fame, I was so scared. I was more scared that time in wrestling than I ever was on any promo, on any title bout, on anything because... It was all foreign to me. It was all new. I didn't know what I was going to get going in. Like, I didn't know how the kids were. I didn't know how the atmosphere was. I didn't know this whole change and transition of, you know, the, the whole, just how wrestling was, right? Because I didn't watch it. Once I left wrestling in 2001, 
I never turned on the TV. I never watched it until I was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2015. Wow. wow. That's, uh, that's fantastic, honestly. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, um, I mean, they treated me so well. It was night and day from when I was there and when I got inducted. And then now signing a Legends contract with them, um, being very busy with them, being, you know, being an ambassador for them and speaking for the company. And I, I'm treated better now in wrestling and not even wrestling than I ever was in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for ending, uh, just a simple reminder, everyone. So um, the women who would be king, the Medusa story, uh, is uh, available in pre-order on ecwpress.com. So go there, uh, place an order, uh, support uh, Medusa. Aww. That's pretty cool. And uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm gonna do a book tour up in Canada. So hopefully, yeah. I get to see you. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Thank you. So for ending. As usual, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Uh, Nostradamus Ben, it's a, a French prophet, uh, Nostradamus, try to predict the future of our guests. So go ahead, my friend. First of Woo, all, please do. Come on, baby. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for the interview and for uh, for your book and uh, many, yes, many things. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, uh, uh, we talking about uh, we talk about uh, a book, but uh, I predict to you uh, a movie about your life. I think so. I hope so. That's my goal. So when I first, I've been trying to write a book for over thirty years, right? But it wasn't the timing. Timing's everything, right? I mean, yeah. t t sometimes timing is just just when you want to launch something. It maybe it's not the right time, but this book is now. Yeah, it is exactly. now. And my goal is when I started writing this book, my intentions are not just a book. It's yeah. maybe a book, a documentary, and then a film. Yeah, we because will. why not? Oh, yes. We you Sky will. is the limit. Yes, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. sir. <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for your time. Honestly, uh, this is an honor and privilege. Oh, and, thank uh, you. And thank awesome. you. Thank you for being patient and kind. And um, wait until I got back from the doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So uh, thank you, uh, ladies, and uh, have a great day. Goodbye. I wish you the best. Thank, thank you so much. You.